Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your first basic external C++ trainer. It's going to kind of be a remake of Philippe's original How to Hack Any Game tutorial. Uh, you'll notice on the screen here I've placed a puzzle on my wallpaper. If you think you're cool, you can try to decipher it and post your the answer on the website. Uh, I hope some of you have fun with that. It'll be interesting to see who can solve it. Um, so. If you follow our uh, start here, Beginner's Guide to Learning Game Hacking, we have a list here of things you need to do. Um, the second thing on this list is, is these two videos where you're going to learn the basics of Cheat Engine. You're also going to find this little template for, using, uh, for finding multi-level pointers that you're going to need. The other thing you will see is Solaire's How to Hack Any Game tutorial. And so this video is going to be a follow-up on that. In this tutorial, you build a cheat table that we're going to use in this video. And after you've done this video, you're going to want to go to learncpp.com and spend maybe a week or two learning the basics of C++. And then you can finish up uh, this video that we're doing now. So what our code's going to do... Um, we're going to loop through all of our running processes on the system. We're going to find our game process, and we're going to get the process ID to it. We are then going to use open process to get a handle uh, with a certain memory access permission. And then we're going to use git module base address, and that's going to find the address of something like server.dll. And... Then we're going to use find DMA Addy to calculate the, the final address of a multi-level pointer. Then we're going to be using read and write process memory to modify the game. First thing we need to do is work on our cheat table. So this is going to be for a salt cube like usual. And I've already loaded the cheat table from the previous tutorial. And you'll notice we have this assault rifle ammo and pistol ammo pointers and these are two different pointers so you need a different pointer for every gun um, but we're gonna do this one better and we're gonna find a pointer that points to our current weapon ammo um, and if you just look at this real quick uh, the last offset is era is zero which can cause some issues with certain functions so I'm gonna use this as an example uh, to show you just something a little different and so just to show you what that looks like um, where the last offset is zero. I have an example here. So imagine you have this weapon object, right? And then the ammo and clip variable is the first member variable, and that's going to be at offset zero, and then our second variable will be uh, at offset four. So that's, that's why that has a last offset of zero. So in order to find this pointer, okay, so to find, that, to find the current weapon ammo pointer, we're going to do find what writes to the address pointed to by this pointer, which is the address of the value 17. And we're going to shoot our gun, and we get deck ESI. We can stop this scan, we can click show disassembler, and you'll see the instruction is deck ESI, but the ESI is in brackets, which basically means to dereference. So you can read this line as uh, decrease the value held in the address pointed to by ESI. And basically what this means is that the last offset is zero. So we know the value is 17. We know the address is at uh, 22BA890. And we'll copy that into here. And we're going to grab that guy. And the offset is zero. And this minus zero obviously is the same number. So now we're going to search for hex, and we're going to type in this address because we want to find a pointer that points to it. Do our scan. Now you'll notice we have some member variables of the uh, player class um, that's all in this 22 range. And the first things here are all in this 0009 range, so those, those are probably not what we want, but we do have this one. So let's add that, and let's assume that's the one, because there's only really one viable option here. So we'll put that in here. And we know that we also put it here. And now we want to find what plus what equals this. And to do that, we are going to do find out what accesses this address. And we're going to get these instructions. The second one, actually the first one, 
either one of these work fine. Um, and we can see that the offset is 14 uh, from ESI. And so we can grab ESI's value right here, put that here, and we know the last offset is 14. Next step is to find out what points to this address. So we're going to paste it in here, do a new scan, and we get a whole bunch of addresses here that point to that. Now, again, these are all in the 009 range. We have the 0019, and we have the 0F. We can basically filter all those out, and we just want to look at these. So let's add those to our cheat table. I actually added that one in twice. We can remove uh, this guy. Now, now for each one of these addresses, we're going to want to do a find what accesses again. So we can do this to several at a time. I believe we have three debug registers open that allow us to do this. And then we'll shoot our gun twice, and we'll see what we have. We got nothing on this one, so we're just going to exit it. It's obviously no good. We have this one that does not have an offset, so that's probably not a good one either. Um, let's get rid of it. Now, if we look at this one, we do see that uh, we have a ton of instructions all accessing it with 374 as the offset. And if you scroll down, if you notice in the count here, these this, these instructions are executing every tick of the game. A tick is basically like like one uh, execution of the whole game code, we could say. And But we have these logical instructions that execute uh, only twice, which is the number of times we shot our gun. You always want to go with something uh, logical so that you're following the game logic. So any one of these is probably fine. Uh, we know... We're going to say that this is a good uh, pointer for this. So let's grab that address, paste it into here, and then this goes there. And then the last offset is 374. And then if we scroll down, ESI plus 374. So ESI is right here. And then what points to this address? Again, hex scan. And we'll find, again, all the stuff in this range that doesn't really matter. And then we see these green static addresses. So if you're familiar with the salt cube, this is the single player pointer. This is the single and multiplayer pointer. And this one, I'm not sure, works all the time. So through trial and error, I know it's this one. And we'll grab this. Uh, so we know that's the base pointer, right? Now, so we open this. It's uh, a module address plus a relative offset and so that's what you want to use and that will help your hack uh, work more dynamically rather than uh, you're not using a dynamic address just for this one gameplay you want it to always work so we grab that and that is actually our base pointer so it's only a three level multi-level pointer so we can add that we can get rid of this crap we can add this Make a pointer, make it three offsets. First thing's going to be this guy, right? 374, 14, and then 0. And then this is our current weapon ammo. So that's a pointer that we're going to be uh, working with in C++. So we're basically done with Cheat Engine now. Of course, you want to save your uh, pointer. I'm sorry, your uh, cheat table. We can basically exit out all these guys. And let's open up Visual Studio. You'll want to be using Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition. So we're going to do File, New Project. We're going to do a Windows Console application. Uh, I'm going to name it uh, Hack Any Game Part 2. We're going to be using all the default options. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to make it so that our program always executes uh, as administrator so that we can have uh, memory access to uh, other processes running on the system. So do project properties, go to linker, manifest file, and set the UAC execution level as required administrator. 
So first thing we're going to do is we're going to stub out um, the basic functionality of our program and then we're going to write each individual function and then I'm going to tell you uh, how the function works. So let's open up in main here. First thing we need to do, uh, basically we're just replicating everything that Cheat Engine does. So when we when we attach Cheat Engine, it, it gives us a list of the processes processes that are running, and then you attach to it, which gets a process ID and then calls open process on it. So we're gonna get a proc ID of the target process. We're going to get module base address. We're gonna get a handle to the process using open process and then we're going to resolve uh, the base address of the pony chain we are going to uh, resolve our ammo pointer chain then we're going to read out the uh, ammo value and then we're going to write to it and then we're going to read it out again just to confirm it works. So to do all this, we need some functions that interact with the process. So we're going to right click our project and we're going to do uh, add a new filter and we're going to call it a uh, proc. And a filter is basically just like you organize uh, files inside of it. It doesn't actually exist on disk, just in the project itself. Then we're going to do add a, a class, and we're going to call it proc. Just hit OK. And when we do that, it's going to create a, a header and a uh, source file. We're going to drag that into our proc uh, filter to keep organized. We're actually going to delete this because we're not actually going to use a proc class. We just want these nice files. Now first thing you'll notice is uh, the STD AFX header. And what this is is a default Visual Studio project now are, is using pre-compiled headers. So if we right click that and open the document, it tells you what's going on. These are some things that Visual Studio includes already. Um, target ver tells it what opera, uh, which version of the operating system you're compiling for, which is not always too important as long as you're 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 coding for like Windows 7, 8, or 10. Then it pretty much works on all operating systems. Um, and then you can reference additional headers here. We're not going to do that, but um, for instance, if you had other headers like this that you were using, you could put it into here, and your compiler will compile those headers once. And then in the future, when you're changing your project, it won't need to recompile all the headers. These are headers that aren't going to change. If you have your own headers and you change them regularly, you don't want to put them in here. Uh, but it can cut the compile time on a large project down by like, by like minutes. Uh, so it's really good to use in larger projects. And we'll also notice that every source file is going to include the header file. So you define your... Uh, function prototypes in your header and then you div you uh, I'm sorry you declare them in the header and then you define them in your source file in object-oriented programming you always want to keep your the you want to encapsulate everything so uh, any functionality that you're using should work on its own and be completely separate from your project so that if you create another project a few weeks from now, you can copy and paste in your header and your source file and then use that code without having to modify it. And that's how you know modern development is done, so you don't have to keep rewriting the same junk that you've, you've been using. So in our proc.h, uh, we need to include some... Uh, some headers here. We're in, we need the vector class, we need to include uh, windows.h, and we need to include uh, tool help 32.h, and the first function is going to be d, uh, d word get proc id. It's going to take a constant uh, wide char underscore t pointer proc name. We're going to do a u int pointer underscore t get module base address. Uh, D word proc ID constant wchar underscore t pointer uh, mod name and then u int pointer underscore t find dma addy 
and that's going to take a handle, hproc, and a uint pointer underscore t pointer, and then a std vector unsigned int. So these are our function uh, declarations, and so now we're going to define them in the source file. We can just copy these and paste them into here. We can delete these semicolons, and we can do out the brackets like this so that we can define them. So you're already going to have some questions. Uh, why are we using dword? Uh, dword, uh, the process ID is a dword variable in the Windows API. That's why we use dword. Now, why are we using constant uh, a wide char? Well, the default uh, program settings for Visual Studio is to use Unicode as the default character set. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to define a proc ID and we're going to assign it the value of zero for error checking. Uh, we're going to do a handle h snap equals create tool help 32 snapshot. And we're going to do a th 32 cs underscore snap uh, process and a zero. And then we're going to do if h snap does not equal invalid handle value uh, process entry 32 I'm a horrible typer I apologize Jesus rake process entry 32 proc entry proc entry dot dw size equals size of proc entry and then it, if process 32 first h snap address of proc entry uh, we're going to do a do while loop and it's going to be a while process 32 next uh, h snap address of proc entry and in the loop it's going to do another if statement uh, while not uh, if not wcsicmp proc entry dot scxe file proc name uh, proc id equals proc entry.th32 process ID. Then we're going to break. And down after this last uh, bracket here, we're going to close handle, h snap, and then we're going to return proc ID. Oh, and this is supposed to be a W, I think. There we go. Okay, and so how do we how did we find this function? How do we know what this all means? So if you go to MSDN uh, and check out any Windows API function, you're going to find out what all these things do, and they even have a guide with the code that you can straight up use right now that does basically what we did. It uses uh, tchars, it, and it has a lot of error checking and some output for you uh, if you're interested to learn more. Now we'll just go over uh, real quick. Uh, we're going to set the process ID to zero to for error checking. We're going to call create help 32 snapshot. This uh, this argument is what we want to get a snapshot of. We want to take a snapshot of the processes. And when we get that handle, we're going to store an h snap. Now, if you look at the return value of uh, the tool help snapshot function, you'll find out that if it fails, it's going to give you this return value. So the only error checking we need to do here is this uh, if statement. And a process 32, we can right click this to go to go to definition. And we see that it's a it's a if in def. Uh, if it's Unicode, process entry 32 is going to resolve to this function. So we do go to definition again. And then this is the what's in the going on in the background here. It's got a bunch of interesting member variables. Uh, the only one that we really need is the uh, process ID. 
and probably the name of the uh, the executable. So uh, it tells you in the documentation that you need to set the DW size um, for this to work correctly. And then process 32 first, basically in the background, it grabs the first process in the snapshot and then it stores it into proc entry. And then it's gonna loop through all of them using the process 32 next command. And it's gonna do this if statement where it compares the file name ex against our given process name. And this is just a string compare that uses uh, wide uh, chars and it's um, ca uh, case insensitive. So it doesn't matter if you type uh, the capital letters correctly or not. When our process is found, it's gonna break out of the, uh, the loop here. It's gonna go down here to close the handle to the snapshot and that's gonna stop memory leaks and then we're gonna return the process ID. So the next function here is uh, get module base address. It takes a u, it returns a u int pointer. Now a u int pointer is kind of like a uh, an architecture independent of variable because when you're compiling for x86, it's going to compile to a 32-bit value, and 64-bit uh, is compiled to a 64-bit variable because uh, the the addressable memory range for each of those processes is the range uh, of a 32 or a 64 bit variable. So as long as you code your, as long as you compile your project for the architecture that the game process uses, then this is gonna work correctly. All right, so let's type this out here. U int pointer underscore t mod base address equals zero. It's basically the same thing we just did, uh, but it's gonna be for modules. So handle h snap equals create tool help32 snapshot th32cs snap module. And we're gonna or it with another uh, flag here, th32cs underscore snap module uh, 32. And I believe what that does is it will get you 32 bit and 64 bit um, modules. All right, so if H snap does not equal invalid a handle again. By the way, if you're new to coding, uh, if you type like half a variable name and then hit tab, it will uh, give you a selection of variables that you can use uh, that match that string. Uh, so you don't have to type all the whole thing out. So module entry 32 mod entry, mod entry dot DW size equals size of mod entry. And then at if conditional, if module 32 first, h snap address of mod entry. And then another do while loop. And in the while is going to be uh, module 32 next, h snap as usual, address of mod entry. And then in the do here, another uh, if conditional to check the uh, string comparison. Uh, mod entry dot sc module mod name. Mod base address equals, we're gonna cast this to a u int pointer underscore t mod entry dot mod base address. Do we need to cast this? I think we do. Yeah, we do. And how do we know that? Well, we can right click this, go to definition, and we see it's defined as a byte pointer. And so we need to cast it to UN pointer for that to be uh, uh, compatible uh, with that data type. Then we're gonna break. missing a semicolon and then at the bottom here we're going to close handle h snap and then return mod base address so same exact thing that we did before i'm not going to explain it again now find dma addy basically dma is 
for dynamic memory allocation. It's kind of a stupid name. This is what uh, Fleep used, and everyone knows it by that name, so I'm going to continue to use it. Um, so this function takes a handle to a process, and it takes a base pointer, which is going to be like the acclient.exe, and then it's going to take a vector of unsigned ints that are going to uh, be our offsets. Sorry, I messed that one up. So let's go back into proc h and just copy and paste it over. So u int pointer underscore t address pointer a for loop unsigned int i equals zero i less than offsets dot size and then plus plus i. And then we're going to call read process memory. And we're going to pass it to hproc. And we're going to pipe, uh, or typecast a byte to a byte pointer. Uh, the address. Address of address. One too many D's. Size of address. And then a zero. You can go to MSDN and you can look at this read process memory function. It's going to explain uh, what it does. Let's take a quick peep here. All right, so it takes in a handle to a process. Uh, the second is a pointer to the base address in the process that we want to read. And this is an output uh, argument. So this is where we're going to store the contents of the process that we're reading. And then the number of bytes we want to read. And this is an optional variable. Uh, they can just leave to null to ignore it because it tells you how many bytes were actually read. Um, which is typically not important, but for error checking, it can be good. And then if the function succeeds, the return value is non-zero. Now, we could have put u int pointer underscore t in here, but it's always better just to use this, because let's say back in the, in the future, you change your code and you change the data type here. In that case, you don't have to change it here as well. So this is going to dynamically get the size every time correctly. So that's why you want to do that. Why are we casting this to a byte pointer? Well, if we go to reprocess memory, it takes a, an LPC void. We can go to definition on that. Oh, apparently, we can't. Uh, peak definition. OK, yeah. So LPC void is basically means long pointer to a uh, constant void and so it's um, so void means it's uh, the variable do the data types not important um, it's basically just gonna it's just gonna act like read it by bytes basically and then it's constant because we don't want it to change inside the function and it's long because it can be 32 bits or 64 if we're on a 32 uh, 64 bit process and so after that line, we're going to do address plus equals offsets and then index into it using i. And after that's done, we're going to return address. So it uh, it create it it grabs the value of pointer, puts it in address. Um, the nice way of using these the vector is that you can dynamically get the size, uh, which is the number of offsets, and you don't have to include it in your actual function call. And then read process memory is going to read what's in the address and store it into address. Then it's going to, it's basically dereferencing the pointer. And then it's going to add the offset and store it in address. It's going to, it's going to loop back in. It's going to read that pointer, put it into address, add the offset, and repeatedly do that. And at the end, it's going to return you uh, the address. And that ad, the return address is going to be the, the, the address of the actual uh, ammo value. So we've got the header and the source file all set for our, for that. Now we need to go to our our main source file here, and we're going to get the proc ID by doing dword proc ID equals get proc ID uh, ac client exe. Now this is what we call, this is called a strip. Oh, you know what we have to do first? We have to include some stuff. So 
The first to include is always going to be the pre-compiled headers. Uh, the second the second set of includes you want to use like C, uh, C++ standard library, and then after that you use you can do your process uh, your architecture specific headers, and then after that use your uh, include your project specific headers. So first thing is I/O stream uh, vector. Nose.h and then include uh, proc.h. Now the angle brackets tell it tell uh, Visual Studio to look for these headers in the in the project dependency uh, folders. Now, if you want to see where those are defined, right-click your project, go to properties, and go to Visual C directories, and you see you have these include directories and library directories, and there's there's a whole bunch of them going to be listed here. If you click edit, it's going to show you all these are are where they're going to look for uh, these headers in the angle brackets. And then anything with quotation marks means that it's inside uh, the project folder. So now that we've included proc.h, uh, this should resolve, except it doesn't. And that's because this is a string literal, um, which is just a char array. And uh, but when you do a string literal, it basically it it's going to pass in a pointer uh, basically to this um, to this char array. Except we're compiling for Unicode, Unicode, and so string literals are are gonna be uh, just char arrays. So in order to do Unicode, we put the L macro in front of it, and that uh, con basically converts it to Unicode. And it's still not compiling because it says git proc ID is not defined. I don't know why. Let's open proc.h. And we have git proc ID, right? Oh, you know why? Because I wrote it wrong. Hey. Now let's go back to main. Yep, now we're good. Okay. So get the module base address. U int pointer underscore t module base equals get module base address and it's going to take in the process id and another string uh, ac client.exe and again we need the l macro for the unicode sorry for my horrible typing again all right get handle to the process first we're going to define a handle called h process we're going to set it to zero and then late. It's always good to initialize things to zero, um, especially with Windows API functions, because a lot of Windows API functions will return zero um, as an error checking mechanism. So then we're going to do uh, h process equals open process process all access null proc ID. And so we're going to call open process. Process all access is let's go to MSDN with open process and take a look. Man, I don't know what they did with MSDN lately, but it's garbage. All right, so uh, it's the desired access. And if you look at this, it tells you this parameter can be one or more of the process access rights which are basically uh, bit fields uh, that represent these different controls. You can read all about it. Process all access basically tells you um, that you're going to be able to read, write, execute, query information, and a whole bunch of these other guys here. Uh, you don't need to use process all access. You can just use read and write. Um, but to make these tutorials easier, we're just going to use this in all of them so that no one gets confused. OK. And if we right click this and go to go to definition, it's going to tell you how this uh, define is defined. It's basically oring these bit fields to create uh, the bit field. And so we can look at what standard access rights. And that's this one. Interesting that that says fool. But anyway, OK. Resolve base address. U int pointer underscore T. We're going to call this uh, dynamic pointer base address equals module module base plus 0x10f4f4 
And why are we doing that? Because if we go to cheat engine and open this up, we got the address of the module, and then this is the relative offset. Then we're going to resolve our ammo pointer chain. STD, we're going to define our uh, offsets by doing STD vector, unsigned int, and, and we're going to call it ammo offsets. And we're going to use an initializer list here, and it's going to be 0x374, 0x14, 0x0, and that's just straight from our cheat table. Um, a vector is just a container um, that that is dynamic, so you can add things and remove them and sort it um, all uh, at, at runtime and stuff like that. So why are we using unsigned int? Basically, uh, assigned int uh, accepts negative values. Now, you can't have a negative address uh, you know, in a process. So we always use unsigned int, and that's just, uh, you know, C is strong typed, so the types are important, and the reason is it's basically for error checking. If you use the correct types, you know, you're not, and something, some operation does not compile, it's, it's because using that type would cause a problem in, in, your, in your process. So that's why we're using unsigned int. So next thing we're going to do is... We're going to use find DMA Addy. So you int pointer underscore t ammo address equals find DMA. Pass in the process dynamic pointer base address and then ammo offsets. Now we'll also uh, we'll output some stuff to the console so you guys can like see what's going on. Uh, std c out dynamic pointer base address std hex dynamic pointer base address std end line. Oh, I'm missing an extra colon there. Okay, so this is the uh, this is from uh, I/O stream, and it's part of the standard library. So these two, uh, what are they called? Colons are. It's called the scope resolution operator. So STD is a namespace, and it's going to resolve in into the scope of that namespace, and we're going to access the uh, the C out instruction. You'll see a lot of people using namespace, uh, doing using namespace std, so that you don't need this part. Um, that's not a good pro coding practice. It sounds stupid, but uh, just last week we had two people on the forum who who poisoned their namespace. So let's say you you were using namespace std, right? And then you you created uh, let's say int c out, okay? That's not that's not going to work. Uh, that's not going to compile. Let's see if it does, just for fun. Right. So it doesn't compile. But then you're going to say, okay, well, I'm not I'm not going to poison my namespace. Well, you are. And what's going to happen is you're going to use someone else's code and you're going to include it in your code, and then your namespace is going to be poisoned. So don't do it. Plus, you look cooler, right? Um, so after we resolve our, oh, let me explain this first. So. Dynamic pointer address. We're just making a string to make it look cool. We're going to de uh, prefix it with a 0x to show that it's hex. We're going to use std hex to convert whatever this variable is uh, into hexadecimal. And then we're going to end the line. I'm going to do a similar uh, thing here. And in fact, I'm just going to copy and paste this. And we're going to change this to ammo address. And change this to ammo address. Next, we're going to read the ammo value, and so we need a buffer to put it into, so we're going to do int ammo value equals zero. We're going to do a read process memory, uh, hproc, oh, hprocess, and we're going to type cast to a byte pointer, ammo address, we're going to store it in ammo value, new size of ammo value, 
null pointer. And you're going to ask me why am I using null pointer? Well, if we look at the definition of read process memory, you're going to see that uh, it's taking a pointer to a size t. And so anytime you use a pointer, it makes more sense to use null pointer. We can put a zero in there or null, which are the same thing. It's also going to work, especially for all Windows API functions. But uh, sometimes you just want your types all to match uh, so that you know there's never going to be a problem. So next thing is stdc out uh, current ammo equals std decimal. We want to convert this to decimal this time. So if you do std hex up here, for all your following output to console, it's going to do it all as hex. So you need to redefine as decimal here. All right, we're going to write to it, and that's going to be int. Uh, what's our address? We're, what are we going to write to it? We're going to write a variable called new ammo, and it's going to have the value of 1337. Uh, we're going to do write process memory, and each process, again, casting it to a byte pointer. Ammo address, address of new ammo, size of new ammo, null pointer. Missing a thing there. There we go. All right, so we're going to write to process memory. Um, where are we going to write to memory? We're going to write to the address of our ammo value. And our source of that write is going to be this variable here. So it's going to write the four bytes, in this case, of this variable into this address. Now, o over the course of you learning C++, there's a ton of different variable uh, data types. And you'll know that uh, a lot of variable types are, are basically these defines um, or these type defs that people are doing. And the developers of large libraries and APIs and stuff, they like to define them to, to match what they're doing. Um, but you also have these the data types that are just intrinsic to, to C itself. Uh, and then there's things like vector, which is a data type. It's a, a container, and that's from the, uh, the standard library, I believe. So I showed you this trick where if you ever don't know what something means, just right-click it and check it out. So why are we using byte pointer uh, for our addresses? Um, because we, we know it's a pointer, okay? It's, act, it's actually a uint pointer underscore t, which is just a uh, an unsigned int. It's not a pointer, so we're going to typecast it to a pointer type, and it and we're going to do we're going to call it a byte is going to be the type that it points to. And if we look at byte, it's uh, an unsigned char. So again, any address or uh, it's nice to use unsigned. It actually doesn't really matter that much in this case. You can really use anything that you want that's compatible, but I think ev a lot of people agree like this just it just reads nice and it's easy to know what that um, what that typecast it means. You know, you always want to you always want to write code that's easy to read. So now we're going to read out the uh, variable we just wrote and confirm that it's working. Uh, read process memory h pros uh, h process byte pointer ammo address store into ammo value size of ammo value um, and then null pointer again capital V then we're gonna output this crap again uh, new ammo equals this std decimal uh, ammo value this guy and line okay and right before we return zero, we're going to do a get char. And basically what that's going to do, it's going to require that you press enter uh, for input before the thing ends. And that way we can see our output on screen. Um, so now we hit F7 and see if it compiles. And it doesn't because I forgot the colon again. Okay, F7 again. Doesn't compile. Okay, so what did we do wrong? Mm -hmm. All right, so something's, something's gone wrong in my headers somewhere. I think I know what it is. Yeah, okay. So we didn't do uh, 
get proc ID there. I forgot to, I made that typo. Okay, let's compile it again. Ah, the joys of programming. Okay, this is actually kind of a weird error here. Okay, so I, I commented out all the shit, and what it ends up being is I forgot semicolon right there. So now, F7. It compiles. Great. Okay. So now, let us go into Salt Cube and let's run our debugger. And we see dynamic pointer base address uh, is going to match what we see right here. And the ammo address is uh, 22BA890. That's correct. It was 12, and now it's 1337. So it worked. Cool. All right, so we did it. Um, I'm going to go one step farther um, and, and just show you a little more here. Okay. All right, just to show you a little more, we are going to break point a few functions here, get proc ID, get module, base, and find DMA Addy. Load up the debugger. It's going to hit the breakpoint. We're going to step into it, okay? And what we want to do is put a breakpoint right here on the string compare, continue. We're going to see this is our current process name that we want to find, that we're defining. And then down here is the actual one that we're currently looking at in this process entry 32 uh, structure. So each time you hit continue, it's going to cycle through all of those. And then eventually, if we put a breakpoint right here, uh, we're going to see that now they match. And then it's going to break out of it, close the handle, return the proc ID. Hit continue again. We got get module base address, step into it. And we are going to step, um, what do we want to do? It's going to be the same exact thing. So if the string compare matches, AC client, AC client, right? And so that matches. So now it's going to assign it. It's going to break, close handle, uh, return. Hit continue again, and we have our find DMA Addy. So let's go to definition in here. And let's put a breakpoint on the reprocess memory, hit continue, and we're going to follow this along in Cheat Engine. So let's pull up that pointer. Let's look, open up offsets. And so we're looking at address, which is 50F4, which is what this resolves to. And we're going to read, and it's going to store it into address. All right. It's going to, it's going to add the offset, which is uh, 374. And then it's now we're going to, so that gives us this address. We're then going to dereference it by stepping over, by reading it. And then we get the B78, which is right here. We're going to add the offset, which is 14. Okay. And then we're going to read process memory again. And we get this variable that ends in 890. We see it right here. We're going to add zero to it. And then we're going to return. And you'll see that the return address is the actual address of our memory. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, uh, post them on the forum. You'll be able to download the source code and the cheat engine table uh, in that thread, which I'll link in the description. Please, if you like these tutorials, please donate. Uh, the more donations I get, the more videos I can do, and the more cool stuff I can do with guided hacking. There's a bunch of new ways you can donate. Um, that give you these rank upgrades with different uh, permissions. You can donate with PayPal. Uh, you can donate with cryptocurrency. You can become a patron on our Patreon. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Peace out.